It is party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the chat. Braithers Show Debate Hangover Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> the Chance of Soulless Ginger Rapper, he's going to drive us into the nether regions of all things uh, debacle, uh, which is what I'm calling last night's debate. We'll get into <laughs> it, deep into it. going to have a good time with it. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. Did you watch? Did you watch? Did you enjoy? Of course I did. Enjoy, yeah. I don't know so much, but I did watch it. I've yet to find anybody who enjoyed it. Uh, it's interesting. we got some fun takeaways. Of course, Party Foul Steve is hanging out over in the pub. He's all lonely. He's, he's, yeah. I like yeah. it this way. Yeah, I'm you the got, center of attention. I'm yeah. all by myself. Right you know, there I'm a narcissist. Like buzzing in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> like Lisa Page made me do it. Yep. The host of Lisa Page made me do it. You need to be following her on social media and subscribe to her podcast. Uh, Y'all watched last night. Oh, well, did you I? watched because Stu was here. Your husband had to do the post <coughs> debate yeah. coverage. Yeah, I, I watched some of that. Couldn't even. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna relive it and rehash it on today's episode. So you guys are going to uh, you're gonna get mad all over again. Uh, if you're not mad, you should be mad. Uh, there's there was a lot that was going on that. Mm, just really bugged me and i and i don't just mean the moderator i don't yeah. mean joe biden i mean trump as well the whole mm. thing was just a mess uh but we're gonna have fun with it today we're gonna talk about it and i'm gonna i'm gonna give you some play-by-play -play analysis that you don't want to miss i guarantee you uh did it change anybody's mind let's just leave it at that did it did it change like do you suddenly candace want to vote for joe biden no i think it just made me more confused about this year and this election and everything going on right now. It's a good way to put it. It was a it was it was the debate that 2020 deserved, mm -hmm. right? Steve's voting for Joe Biden. I think just no, Steve, I'm not. He's probably not voting for the close. Green Party, whoever the Green Party <laughs> candidate is. I I wish there was a Green Party. There is a candidate. Green Party. No, I wish there was a legitimate other person. The libertarian Party yeah, and like a third party. Like a third that was just as strong as the other yeah well two. good luck with that's, that um yeah. you know i just still maintain it's so important that we not allow the democrats in to those offices we got you got to vote for trump i mean oh, you got to yeah. vote for trump yeah. otherwise you're not going to recognize this country in a couple of years i mean i'm already starting to not recognize it i mean joe didn't even recognize himself last night i know he couldn't keep track i was i mean look at i agree with you i think it was a mess just like this entire year yeah um but i also thought like trump came out swinging He's and strong. you could just tell he was he was fired up and i don't blame him he's the, the the media the mainstream media has been so unfair to him from the jump from even before he got into office and you know he he had his numbers straight i thought he had his facts straight when he wasn't interrupting uh joe <laughs> dark pitted eyes i was doing an instagram live and the people on my live were just what's going on with him yeah. dead he yeah. looked dead well we'll get into it i live tweeted it and had a lot of fun with it uh, before we do that, the pandemic didn't just test our country's economic endurance. It exposed how living an unhealthy lifestyle can increase your risk. I want to recommend to you guys Field of Greens from Brickhouse Nutrition every single day. It's what I do. I love all of their products. And there's a lot of other health products that are out there that are going to boast about, you know, having a vegetable in it or some kind of fruit. Or but No, no. Field of Greens is packed with 12 clinically researched essential fruits and vegetables. Plus, it's got green tea in it. It's got ginger. It's got turmeric. It's got beets. Uh, it's a powerful combination. It's going to support your heart health. It supports a healthy immune system, metabolism, blood pressure, digestion. Uh, Field of Greens, loaded with antioxidants, prebiotic, probiotics. Just put one scoop in a glass of water, stir it up, drink that sucker, and you are done. So don't just settle for a single vegetable in some serving. Get You get the whole thing in the entire field of greens. Go to BrickHouseChad.com right now. Save 15% off a 30-day supply with offer code CHAD. Subscribe. Save an extra 10% every month. Turn your body into a brick house. Try Field of Greens. Go get it today. BrickHouseChad.com. Go there today. Be right back. And so, anyway, no way to say anybody can ever. Yeah, there's no way in the beginning. It's, no it's, it's, in the beginning. it's, it's, it's not bad at all. The whole no. It's fine. Antifa is totally fine. Pro-Antifa. I mean, totally I don't fine. know. It's Pro an Antifa. idea. It's not an organization. There's no agitators at all. I mean, let's listen. You're not listening. You're not listening to me. Let me finish the question. None of y'all are listening to me. I can't even do that seriously. I know, right? That was last night's debate, though. It was one big jumble of words. I do blame Chris Wallace for being one of the absolute worst moderators that I can remember. Worse than Lester Holt. And that's saying something. 
uh, it, it was a terrible, terrible deal because for several reasons, and we'll analyze it, but Chris Wallace, you know, I wish that he would have stepped back. Let's have a Lincoln-Douglas debate. Mm-hmm. Quit all these rules mm-hmm. and regulations to the debate. It's going to be a brawl. Stop. Let them talk. Get out of the way and shut up. And I, so many times I just want to reach through and strangle that pinhead. But they, they have to have a moderator. There well, has to be have somebody a moderator, to keep, that's they're, fine. They're going to just talk over each other otherwise. But, and, but he a, lost they, they control. did that anyway. He yeah, lost, exactly. yeah. you mixed he his lost voice control right yeah, yeah. off the bat. That's right. We and, don't need a moderator. All rules out the window this year. This year is a yeah. crapshoot. We shouldn't have even had him. He was awful from the beginning. He had no control. No control. Well, I didn't like the fact that he consistently had to save Joe Biden. Every time. I mean, Joe was not, and we'll talk about this. There were certain things that were, and then he had, he started disagreeing with Trump on numerous points. It's not your place to freaking disagree with the debater. Right. Shut up and let the debater talk. It was so bad. And no, Trump did not help himself no. in that because he, Trump wanted to be heard. But I agree with your assessment. He's pissed off. Mm-hmm. He's tired of being uh, talked about, lied about. And there were a lot of falsehoods that were being spewed last night. But if he would have let Biden just keep talking, he would have stepped on his own beep. Yeah, he, he <laughs> yeah. would have because he, if, he, if you give Biden enough rope, he'll hang himself. And that's what I kept saying. Just let the man let talk. him talk because he kept he kept circling back around. He was flubbing up his words. He was flubbing up his numbers, his statistics. Also, yeah. very even though we Joe and we know Trump, eh, but Joe had no respect for Trump. He's still your no. president. Calling him a clown, calling yeah. him, telling him to shut up. Well, let's get no into respect. that. Well, his, party, that. Hang on. His, his party probably told him hey attack him first call him names because he's going to call you names right because he has a history of calling people i I don't think that biden can even control himself i think he's got anger issues and with the brain issues Mm -hmm. i think he can't control it play that first clip vote now make sure you in fact let people know you're a senator i'm not going to answer the question because because the question is the question is justice radical left will you shut up man who is on your list joe this Who's is on your so right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. We have end, no, no. Give a list. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pr- productive segment, wasn't it? <laughs> Keep yapping, man. The people understand, Joe. <laughs> they sure 47 do. years, you've Joe. done nothing. See, now, if I were in the situation, I'd want to come over there and knock the plugs out of his head. I know. I mean, the keep yapping, man, yep. and, and doing his hands. You won't answer the question. He didn't answer any questions. I did not take away one thing. If I was watching to get a plan from Biden, I didn't yeah. get anything. He was not solid on anything. So he was solid on one thing. He said he is not for the new Green Deal. Right. But on his website, he is. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and I live tweeted that. I said, no, it doesn't matter what you believe. He just said he's not for the new Green Deal. He's Green a liar. He is a liar. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, and you could tell when he got tired late mm-hmm. in the debate. But right there, historically Joe Biden has been opposed to packing the courts. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying pack the courts. And he wouldn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pack the court? Who is your nominee, Joe? Mm -hmm. He's never listed a nominee. Uh, Are you going to get rid of the filibuster, right? Um, Are are you going to use the filibuster? I mean, all these different questions that he's talked about in the past, and now he's not coming down on any of them. And then Chris Wallace, of course, saves him. Mm -hmm. Every time. As soon as he says, shut up, man, or, you know, that kind of stuff, Chris knows he's got to pull him out Uh from the fire Uh because he's going too far in. So that's that's the sort of thing. That's a perfect example of if if Trump would have just pushed him a little bit Mm -hmm. and poked the bear, you would have seen more of that, Mm -hmm. even more of that if Chris hadn't saved him. Let's play that next little clip about uh, being smart. He panicked or he just looked at the stock market. One of the two, because guess what? A lot of people died. And a lot more are going to die unless he gets a lot smarter, a lot quicker. So, Mr. President, did you use the word smart? Uh, so you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. You didn't <laughs> go to so. Delaware State. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. <laughs> I, oh, this is my favorite part. Because you know what? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing smart about you, Joe. 47 years, you've done nothing. Let's have- yeah, see, Joe's ready to go, go fight. Yeah. yeah, he's he. You can always tell when he's pissed because uh-huh. he starts laughing at all that that fake laugh and the big teeth come out. His big denture, chiclet yeah. teeth. When he said that last night, I was standing up. I about spit my drink. Mm-hmm. I'd gone. I'd gone fix another drink. And I was like, oh, 
If I'm Joe Biden, I'm thinking, oh, what am I saying now? Because that wasn't rehearsed. He didn't know what to say. He had, you know, this is the thing with Trump. He's always been a CEO. And so he, no one's talking down to him because he's always been in control of the room. And that's how it was last night. Yeah. And there was no respect from Biden at all, at all. It was gross. I mean, it was gross. Yeah. Uh, but I mean that that's Trump being Trump. Yeah. But the problem yeah. last night was Trump being Trump didn't always help him. Right. Uh, and <laughs> no, because you know Trump's used to people just sitting and listening to what he has to say, and mm -hmm. if they don't, he fires them. Right. I mean that's just the way he is. He can't fire, you know, Joe. So he, well, he's got he's a debate. Just, yeah. I mean he's got a debate, but he wants to be heard. And if you would listen through, there were a lot of sound bites. They got lost. There were a mm -hmm. lot of liners. There were a lot of funny things or a lot of charismatic things and smart things that Trump said that got lost mm -hmm. because everybody was talking at the same time. Right. And I think today a lot of us are catching what he said because yeah. we're hearing them played back. But last night in the heat of the moment, I didn't want to rewind it. I wanted to watch it live yeah. so I couldn't rehear it yeah. until today. But yeah, he had a lot of. I felt like when Trump came out, he was very presidential. Yeah. He was very presidential. He was in charge. He had his facts. He wasn't stumbling over nope. himself. He was pretty articulate. Mm -hmm. Way better than he was and much more presidential than he was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's come a long way in four years. So, uh, but you're right. The disrespect was was kind of pissing me off. He's still the president. He, he, yeah. missed, he missed some opportunities, though. Oh, he and, missed a ton of opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And one of the biggest ones, and I even put it on my Facebook, it had to do with condemning white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And my thought is you're in front of the entire every network is watching this debate. Here's your opportunity to come out and say, I am against I condemn white supremacy in any form or fashion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you did not do that. He said, sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that just that pissed me off. Well, yeah, we'll that, talk about that. We, we'll get into that. That's that's on. And balance. Biden missed an opportunity, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I will. I've got some pretty, pretty uh, in-depth analysis on that little part, because you're right. It could have gone a lot different. Uh, play this. Uh, let's talk about the rallies for a minute. Go into uh, what Trump and Biden were saying about their rallies. Your different approaches has even affected the way that you have campaigned. Uh, President Trump, you're holding large rallies with crowds packed together, thousands of people. Outside. Outside. Yes, sir. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> Vice President Biden, you are holding much smaller uh, events with nobody will show up. People with <laughs> well, it's true. With, nobody shows up to his okay. rallies. In any case, <laughs> why are you holding the big rallies? Why are you not? You go first, sir. Because people want to hear what I have to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I loved it. I know he's right. He is kind of like Howard Stern. People listen because they want to hear what he's going to say. Yeah, because you just don't know. He's yeah. got that shock and awe about him. Well, his, his rallies are entertaining, yeah. right? You go uh -huh. to him, they're funny. He's, his, his comedy is timed out. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a comic, I mm -hmm. mean, in a big way. I was say, even his audiences, are they're colorful people. Yes. They're like... They're just, excited, they're enthusiastic, they're passionate. You see none of that with Biden. Yeah. None of it. Not even from him himself. You don't see it from... I, I haven't met one person that's excited. I'm not even saying this because I'm pro-Trump. I haven't met one person that's excited about Biden. Because we all know Biden is not going to last in the presidency if he wins, God forbid. Yeah. No, and you know? 100% not. And and Biden's boring. Anybody with a middle name Robinette. And he has a <laughs> and he has a vice a vice president nominee that is stands differently on different policies and stuff like that. Completely opposite of his. Yeah, completely. He's mm -hmm. a puppet. He's a placeholder. Yeah, he Bottom is. line, he's sold out to the Bernie Sanders of the world, and that's that's he can talk like he's not, but he is 100%. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trump's the worst president. I don't know if y'all ever realized that. I would disagree with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, play that clip. I'm going to eliminate the Trump tax cuts, and we're going to I'm going to eliminate those tax okay. cuts, and make sure that we invest in the people who, in fact, need the help. People out there need help. But why didn't I you do it over 20, uh, in the no, last no, 25 no, years? No, because you weren't why president. Why did you do it over Because the you last weren't president years. screwing no, no, things no. up. You were a senator. And You're the worst way, president vice, America has ha ever had. Hey, Come hey, Joe, on. Come on. That's a bold statement to make right in front of your president. Yeah. 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 I, I can just, you can tell Trump is fired up. I would be too. He's so pissed and annoyed. All of his words get misconstrued all the time whenever the media, the mainstream media reports anything. I remember when he brought up last night, uh, you inject Clorox. In yeah. And then Trump comes back and says, I was being sarcastic. Of course, anybody with a brain knows that was sarcasm. Right. Biden. Well, it's interesting. He starts out, Biden, by saying, um, I'm going to eliminate Trump tax cuts. Yes. So he's right there telling you he's going to raise your taxes right. back up. Yeah. Forget tax cuts. Yeah. 
We're eliminating that. So you made an argument that Trump has already cut your taxes, mm -hmm. and then you're going to fight against that. Yeah, you validated it. Like That's one of those examples where if you just wait, you know, he'll hang himself. Yes. He could have really let that thing play out. Uh, I, and I know what Trump's strategy was the whole time. First of all, Trump got, you could see the frustration yes. because he wanted to be heard. Mm -hmm. And he's tired of, like you said, being stifled. Yeah. And so, and, and Chris Wallace certainly wasn't going to let that happen. But also you can see his strategy coming out where he just keeps poking Joe to see if the, poking the bear. come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. And I think, he should have okay. went through that first segment though and just laid back. Yes, you're right. Then after yes. that. Then boom, come yeah. hit him because you can fact check him live right there on, yeah. you know, right on TV in front of everybody. Well, and it is easy to be an armchair quarterback and, and you're not under the pressure of the lights and the camera and you're on the spot and you're having to deal with people that are coming at you. And, you know, Joe's saying things to you where you want to go over there and pop him in the mouth mm -hmm. and bust his dentures out. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Joe felt the same way about Donald, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. both wanted to go at each other. It's very clear. These guys don't like each other. They, no, they don't. And you I can could, understand that. You could see certain moments whenever they would show – you know, looking back at Chris Wallace and behind him and, and like Trump's family and stuff sitting back there, there were certain times that they would kind of, they would, you'd see them yeah. physically squirm in their seat because they're like probably thinking in their head, no, no, don't say that or yeah. what have you. Well, yes. it's, uh, <laughs> uh, I've seen bad presidents and you're no Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> uh, to uh, to uh, play the China clip. You know, he talks about the art of the deal. China's made perfected the art of the steel. We have a higher deficit with China now than we did before. We have the highest deficit, trade deficit China with ate Mexico. Your lunch, All right, ate your lunch. <laughs> and China ate your lunch, Joe. And look, no wonder look, your son goes in and he takes out, he takes out uh, billions of dollars takes out billions of dollars to manage. He makes millions of dollars. And also, while we're true. at it, why is it, just out of curiosity, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? Here we go. What did he do with Barista None to of deserve one hundred eighty-three thousand dollars? None of that is question, true. Not an answer. If not, none of that is true. It's oh, really? Totally he didn't get three and a half million. Hey, Mr. President, oh, it's totally, Mr. President, please. Totally discredited. Totally discredited. And by the way, well, wait, he didn't get no, three no. and a half million dollars, Joe. Mr. Vice, he got three Mr. and a half President. million dollars. That is not true. Oh, really, Mr. Oh. President. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty excited at that yeah. part right there. I, I mean, was, um, I mean, legitimate. And but again, Chris Wallace had to save him. And you notice he never looked at Trump. He's always looking at Chris Wallace. Yeah, Joe Biden was. Yeah. Um, hey, we got a new sponsor for the show. I'm pretty excited to announce uh, Bonner Private Wine Partnership. Will Bonner uh, and the partnership. They have a group of around a thousand wine lovers who come together to import great small batch wines that might otherwise get overlooked by large importers. Uh, Will Bonner fell in love with Argentine wine when he moved his family there to Buenos Aires in the um, early 2000s. And I've talked with these guys, had a great, uh, great conversation with them. I'm excited about the wines. Bold stuff, man. If you've never had Argentine wine, you're missing out. Uh, he returned to the U.S. Will found himself disappointed at the cheap mass-produced juice disguised as wine. And so they made up a, they, uh, they made a, a, a mission in life to uh, search the world for unknown, underappreciated, but astounding wines. Um, they, uh, they did a lot of research, both from France and across the world, and they came up with Bonner Private Wines down in Argentina. Their partnerships don't care about labels. They don't give a, anything. They don't care about points in, the, in their wine club. They don't charge big markups. There's no middlemen. They offer no additive packed supermarket wines. There's no inflated cost. Um, they want character. And that is the beauty of their wine. So today I've got a special offer for you. If you love wine, an old French Malbec variety three-pack no longer found in Europe, you can get it. Did you know that most European wines, they're not even European at all. The Malbec grown in these altitudes is an old French variety that went extinct in Europe. Following a major crop blight nearly 200 years ago, you can get bottles of these three wines 200 years in the making today for 47% off while supplies last. Normally, they're about 130 bucks, but now you can get it for $69. All three bottles by going to cowboywines.com. That's cowboywines.com. So who knows how much longer this special part of the world uh, with its Age-old traditions of wine is going to last. Get involved right now. Bonner Private Wines, CowboyWines.com. We'll be right back.
Yeah, uh, there were a couple of times uh, last night where I'm watching the thing, and I'm like, did that really just come out of his mouth? You know, I said that for both of them. For both of <laughs> yes. them, that's true. I expect it out of Trump. Yeah. And then you, I'm still shocked when Joe kind of loses it and, and can't keep it under control. Uh, here's a here's a clip of him going off on Trump. Watch you this. You get the final word, Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This. Hey, hey this let me person. just say to you. No, no, no. I and you notice that really doesn't phase Trump. He, he's yeah, you're right. He's not like that at all affected. Most, that's not what bothered yeah. him. No, not at all. He was on point with what they were debating. Mm -hmm. No getting weird in with this clown. What and was how, the what ahead. was the over under on betting who would uh, call someone a name first? <laughs> well, I had about I had about eleven bets going on the deal last night mm -hmm. with uh, my bookie and uh, <laughs> all kind of prop bets like. Trump pissed me off because, well, first of all, I won because he didn't come to the podium with a mask on. I had bet that he would not. Uh -huh. right? Yep. Uh, pretty safe bet. Mm -hmm. And then there was a bet of would Joe wear a blue tie and would Trump wear a red tie? So I bet that both of them would. Joe comes out wearing whatever that was, that silver and black. Uh -huh. And then Trump comes out with a blue with a red stripe. Yes. I was so pissed oh. off. I was so pissed off. And then I won the, uh, who would they mention first, uh, Amy Coney Barrett or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. And the only time any of them, this is how tightly I was listening to the freaking thing. I had money riding on it <laughs> with my bookie. And so uh, they, they said get the word Ginsburg uh -huh. first. I don't know if that counted. They, I don't know if they had to say the whole name based on how it was set up with my bookie. But I'm pretty sure I won that one. And then he had to say Seattle at least twice, and he only said it once oh. that I heard. Now, Portland, he said a lot. Portland, he said a lot. The over-under on Portland was six and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I, but I didn't put any money on that one. There was a lot going well, on. Well, don't worry. You have another opportunity. That's if Biden, because they're already setting it up. How, did you listen this morning? They're already oh, yeah. setting it up. Like, should we do another debate? Should this even happen? What's the point? Yeah, and let's just not have a dumb moderator. Well, you need to have another debate, and let me tell you why. Because they did not get into any policy no. they really got into no policy it was personal attacks all night personal attacks and cultural issues mm -hmm. that are going on whether it is um you know for things from obamacare which was alluded to but more it was the antifa thing mm -hmm. and as you alluded to the steve the white supremacy thing and uh china and hunter and blah 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 and calling him a clown and uh, but Chris Wallace didn't help the whole deal. I mean, and here's a perfect example of that. Take a look at this clip. That's the end of the didn't segment. We're, mo money. we're moving on. He didn't take them. Well, Vice President, a, Chris, ex, no. Can I be honest? It's a very important try to question. Be honest. No, he I, I stood up. up. No, he stood I, I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you that get rid is of absolutely you know what? You're, wait, not stop. true. You're, tape you're doing it. You're going to have true. Gentlemen. I can't with Chris Wallace. I know. Awful. He was so bad. My hamster could have moderated that better yeah. than Chris Wallace. Yeah. And, and look, I, I wouldn't propose to say that, you know, I could handle those guys going off on each other, but I would have given a little more leash to it, right? And just said, okay, all yes. right. It's your, it's your 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're not here for Chris Wallace. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing that pisses me off about these moderators. Their ego takes over, and they've got to look like they're in control, mm -hmm. right? So they got to be tough. And I'm sorry, you're still dealing with the president and the former vice president. Mm -hmm. They're not hip. Nobody is tuned in to hear Chris Wallace. And Chris Wallace kept interrupting. He yeah. was just as bad as Trump interrupting Biden and vice versa. Chris Wallace, every opportunity had a chance and he did. Yeah. Shutting yeah. Trump down or, you know, ending the question to move on for Biden. He always he was interrupting Trump the entire night. Yeah. My Bastard. problem with him, his, you know, he would start off telling this long story and then ask a little the question. Yes. He had to set that question up yeah. so long. Trump couldn't, he couldn't wait. For, he wanted to answer before yeah. the question was yeah. asked. Ask the question. Don't don't yeah. build a narrative. Yeah, yeah we it don't does, need a damn story. Everybody knows yeah. the narrative. Yeah. Ask the freaking yeah. question. Ask yeah. the question. Um, so let's get it. Let's get into some the nuts and bolts. This is where Joe has started to get a little tired here, and uh, play this next clip here talking about Trump being disastrous for blacks. This is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division. This is a man who, in fact, you talk about helping African Americans. One in 1,000 African Americans has been killed because of the coronavirus. Kona. And if he doesn't do something quickly, by the end of the year, one in 500 will have been killed. One in 500 African Americans. This man, this man, 
is the, is the savior of African Americans? This man cares at all? This man's done virtually nothing. Look, the fact is that you have to look at what he talks about. You have to look at what he did. And what he did has been disastrous for the African-American community. So even at that point, you got Trump who's going, OK, I'm anxious to hear what I did. What have I done? Yeah. Did you see right next to his tie, the wire come out right there on that oh. clip? I wish you could freeze frame that. Well, because I looked like there, there was a there, wire coming there's out. There's been a size. lot of talk about that. Uh, there's people saying, oh, you know, we caught a wire and blah, blah, blah. Was it a microphone? Was it something? I mean, he, he never looked at Trump. Mm -mm. Here's my conspiracy. He never looked at Trump like he wouldn't do it. Yeah. He's not going to turn his head where his left ear is exposed to the camera. Ah. He only looked at Chris Wallace the whole time. So. um. Yeah, and there is some picture and video evidence of a wire coming out of there. Uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes out for that. But, you know, do I think he was wearing an earpiece? No, but uh, awfully suspicious. Mm -hmm. That could have been really just an extra it. mic. Yeah, so I mean, those guys are mic'd up the... so much. I mean, they, they're wearing probably four microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, so who knows? Because if you were going to conceal a wire, you would tape it in there and make sure nobody saw Well, after there's been so it. much talk about it, too, and the idea of getting a third party to inspect, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't think he was. Uh, but, you know, the, obviously the, the diehards out there, they're like, oh, he was getting fed the yeah. stuff. I just don't think it would be good for Biden. I think, first of all, that's the most his eyes have been open in, in 12 months. Uh, Sleepy Joe. I mean, I, yeah, he was he he had something going through his veins because that wasn't the same Joe. And he kept looking down at his notes. I don't think I caught Trump really looking down at all. Trump was yeah. eye to eye looking at and you're right. Joe did not once look at Trump. He just kept focusing on whatever notes, writing stuff yeah. down, whatever. And then looking at Chris Wallace to come rescue me. Yeah. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Chris Wallace did leak him a couple of questions just by watching how Chris rescued him all night long. Like it was so biased. It was obvious. Oh, he definitely, he definitely, um, he held the pen all night, but I never saw him. I'm sure he wrote yes. something down, but it was. Yeah, those guys do that to try to look intellectual. Or, or um, a reminder to take his meds. Hey, can somebody get me a pen over here? Yeah. I'm just well, going to hold it all the time. Just over there and act like you're taking notes yeah. on the show while we're, while we're going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Play that next clip, Chancey. You have treated the African-American population community. You have treated the black community about as bad as anybody in this country. You did the 1990. And that's why, if you look at the polls, I'm doing better than any Republican has done in a long time, because they saw what you did. You call them super predators, and you've called them worse than that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He, try, he shakes his head like, no, I didn't. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And that 94 crime bill, yeah, you did. Right along with the Clintons. That was yours. Biden has forgotten every single thing he's ever said, so he was very confused. Yeah. He kept getting screwed up all night long. I mean, I was dying. If I was drinking last night, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be hungover. You were playing a drinking game? I, was, I, had a, I had a bingo thing going, but it was There like was no way. I saw the drinking game that people were circulating. I'd be like, I'd be toasted. <laughs> oh, my god! I just drank whiskey yeah. constantly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I drink at my pace. Yep. I, was poor, I had it, some whiskey, but I was drinking it at my pace. There was a lot going on. And I knew I had, to, you know, had the post-show coverage that I wanted to, to, you know, on the blaze that I wanted to make sure I was at least a little bit in tune yeah. for, you know. A little conscious for. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, but Chris Wallace, again, uh, he, was, he was showing how tough he was. Play this next clip, Chance. Mr. President, your campaign agreed to both sides would get two-minute answers uninterrupted well your your side agreed to it and why don't you observe what your campaign agreed to as a ground rule okay sir he never keeps his word because because no, back, no 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 i'm not asking that, that was a rhetorical question <laughs> can you go add ahead back, sir yeah here we go let's give it back to biden yeah. here you go let's make sure biden gets his his opportunity all night that's the kind of thing sir 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 your your campaign agreed to let him debate <sighs> for crying out loud let him debate yeah but that's still not a that's an argument to people over talking each other that's not yes a debate. and no i but, mean it, it, there's going every debate's going to have people talking over each other yeah a little bit but then and there needs back to off, be but there, trump, every debate has people talking trump over each would other kind of just 
almost under his breath say things, and that to me is kind of funny. Yeah, yeah if you because, listen, he's got oh, great right. lines. Right. He, he does have great lines. Give them. And that's you know, he, those that's are not, not rehearsed. That's off the cuff. And I would have much rather had Chris Wallace sit back and zip it and let them go at it. You know why? Because Trump would have won every time. Trump's a better. Uh, Trump's a better speaker as a Trump. Trump's a better speaker, and he will always be heard over Biden. Biden could not string together a sentence for his life last night. I yeah. think it would have got physical. It could have. I, yeah. I think it, if you he just let him go, it if would. You be left physical. it to yeah. Joe. It would. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh Joe's yeah. A, Joe's a brawler, man. He thinks he is. He thinks he is. Knock his. He ain't never been out. in a fight in his life except <laughs> that one time with corn pop. And that wasn't even a fight. Yeah. Uh-huh. He scared him so bad. Yeah. Had him but, shaking but in his I, legs. But you know, Chris Wallace, who's going to say, oh, "Sir, sir," that's very condescending. Yeah. Shut up. Your 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 team your your campaign agreed two minutes, dude. What are, you, what are you trying to do? Tell America that you know what's going on and, right. and you're going to put the president in his place? That wasn't necessary. Yeah. There's other ways to do that. It's just there's other ways. And, you know, here we are being armchair quarterbacks. But still, it's not about you, Chris. Mm-mm. Not yeah. about you. No. Lynn I, I think this is where you need to get Candace's, uh, what she told me this morning about who should be the moderator for the show. Who's for that? the thing. Candace? I was going to say Joe Rogan, but it was nope. kind of like a Real Housewives reunion. Yeah, but Bravo way. Andy. Yeah, so yeah. put Andy Cohen Andy in there. Cohen. He knows how to Andy Cohen. Yeah. Deal hey, y'all with- hang tight. We'll be right back. I want to take our next few minutes to uh, pay attention to two clips. Uh, they're a little bit longer, um, but they're the ones that I think that had a, that really kind of summed up a lot of what was going on last night, and it kind of got a little dicey here. Take a look at this one on uh, Joe Biden and his, and his sons. And speaking of my son, the way you talk about the military, the way you talk about them being losers and being and, 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 and just being suckers, my son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got, the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot. And the people left behind okay. there were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking like about Hunter? Hell. Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. You're talking I don't about know. I don't know, Bo. I know Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know got Bo. Thrown, Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. It wasn't dishonorably cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of that vice president, he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow, that is simply and various not other places. True. He my made son, a fortune. Gentlemen, my son. And he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why was he given tens of millions of dollars? But he wasn't given tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, that's been totally discredited. We've already already been totally discredited. Chris trying to save him again. We've already been, blah, 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 blah. Poking the bear. That was Trump poking the bear. And you were, you called it the other, yesterday, once Hunter was brought up. Biden was going to go in, and you could tell Biden his blood was boiling at yeah. that point. I'm yeah, talking about my son, Bo Biden. Well, nobody else was. Yeah. No, he brought his – he yeah. drug him up. Yeah. Yeah, and nobody was talking about Hunter's drug problem. Yeah. You brought that up. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about money. We're talking about cash flow. We're talking yeah. about Chinese and Ukrainian money. We're talking about jobs that he admitted on mm-hmm. Good Morning America mm-hmm. on ABC. I think it was Good Morning America. On ABC, either way, where he said, I'm sure that – all the doors that have been opened to me, all of the opportunities, just because my last name is Biden. Mm-hmm. Those are straight out of Hunter Biden's mouth. And I had some pinhead come to me the other day. I want to talk about, well, before Russia was taking all of Burisma's, you know, Ukraine's resources, and then Burisma came in there and, and was able to shut all that down, and Hunter Biden made it more legitimate and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Hunter Biden wasn't even there for the three years he was on the board of Burisma. He never even set foot on the ground. He wasn't there. Tell me what his expertise was in oil and gas. Anyway, I could go down that road. Uh, but they, it, to say that, Joe, that Hunter Biden legitimized Burisma – with what? Yeah. With what? His last name. Mm-hmm. Period. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. That's all it was. And the, you know, for him to say that's discredited, man, that is that is way off. And that's one of those places where he could have just let him hang himself. Mm-hmm. Now I want to break this one down for you because this was the one where I was really disappointed in the, his response, in Trump's response, 
Uh, I think everybody's disappointed in this response. Uh, I, and I, but I want to break it down. I want to give you my interpretation of what was going on here. And I want you to really, truly listen to this next clip. You have repeatedly well, criticized. I have to answer his statement. No, I, you have his repeatedly. Statement. Wait, you have just repeat, one no, you've been talking he back made and a forth. Statement. I'm asking you. I would a, love no, to you know, end it. Sir, I would I, love to I, end I, it. And you know, if you want to switch seats, we, we could very quickly. We can do that. But I'd I'm sending no, I'm, the I'm, National I'm, Guard. It would be over. There'd be no problem. Okay. But good. they don't want to accept the National Guard. You have repeatedly we, criticized the the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left wing extremist groups. But are you willing tonight? to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. <laughs> do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and would white you like me to condemn? White Proud supremacist. Boys. Okay. So I'll just get right to it. The way the question was framed was shit. Mm -hmm. First of all, yeah. are you willing to condemn white supremacists? He says, yeah, sure. Right. And militia groups. Okay. Well, that's two different things. That's two different things. Just because you're a militia group doesn't make you a white supremacist. So when you're in the heat of battle, when you're in the middle of all that going on and you get asked a question like that, what Trump should have done, I, in my opinion, is he should have separated them. Mm -hmm. And he should have separated them. Instead of going right after the left, which he should have still done that because he should have said, okay, I'm willing to condemn white supremacy. Trump's on record doing that yes, already. he said that. I mean, how many times do you need him to freaking say yeah. it? Yeah. You're not going to believe but it yeah. no matter what he says. Right. And he's right when he says that most of the trouble has come from the left. You don't see the news media out there covering the KKK at mm -mm. these things. Or, or, you know, every now and then somebody might mention the Proud Boys, which is not a white supremacist group. They're not white supremacists. In fact, one of their five tenets is that we're not racist. We refuse racism. And so... But they get lumped into this stuff, and that's not, you know, not their deal. Do I like all of their tactics? No. But he missed the opportunity in front of every news station that was covering this, both CNN, Fox, all of them. He could have said it right there and not heard a sound, you know, because in the news puts the sound bites. The way the question mm -hmm. was framed, there was no way he could have answered that and gotten away with it. I mean, he could have said, yes, I condemn white supremacists. But the question was, and militia groups. Okay, which, that's why he said, okay, name one. Yeah. Which, which militia groups are we talking about? Okay, Proud Boys. Okay, well, I want the K Proud Boys to, to stand down and stand by. Stand by was a horrible way of saying that because what he was saying was, I might need you one day. Mm -hmm. uh, he shouldn't have said that. I understand what he was trying to say, but he shouldn't have said that. You know, stand down, don't exacerbate the situation because that was the thing. Uh, but but to say, do you condemn white supremacists and militia groups? That that's an unfair question to lump that in there. To say, do you do you? He's already said the KKK is a domestic terrorist group. He's already said that last week. He's come down and say white nationalists, white supremacists. Yeah. He's condemning that. Uh, and, but yeah, I, there was an opportunity there, and I'm not sure exactly how he could have done it. But yeah, I agree with it. He's he, he's at the end of the day. I would have said, yeah, I condemn white supremacists. Now, Joe, condemn Antifa. Mm -hmm. Condemn Antifa. And, it, and again, Joe looked stupid by saying that Antifa is an idea, not an organization. They've been around since the 1920s, for crying out loud. Yeah. And then, and then Trump, one of the things that he says after that is he says a bat to the back of the head isn't an idea. Mm -hmm. And he's right. How many times have there been pallets of bricks? And how many times have there been people out there directing traffic, telling the rioters slash protesters where to go? They've done that. They did it in Dallas. We got video footage of it happening through Elijah Schaefer. Mm -hmm. So we know that that's what's going on. Austin Fletcher saw him last night over FaceTime. I've seen his videos. Uh, Fleckus, you know, he's got all kind of stuff. That Same deal. Uh, and so, yeah, they're organized. They're organized. So, you know, Joe put his foot in his mouth with that deal. Could have been handled better. Could have been handled differently. But it, again, it just it, when he did that last night, I was like, "Come on, mm -hmm. Donnie T, just he doesn't want to play into their trap." Yeah, because that's one of those questions that no matter how he would have answered that, they were going to come back at him. But at the same time, my defense of that is, well, why didn't Joe publicly condemn Antifa? Yeah, J Joe 
had the perfect opportunity last night many times to say what's going on is wrong. Antifa's we've got agitators and he didn't say any of that either. He yeah. had a, a huge opportunity to address it. Yeah. And he still hasn't. Still hasn't. He has and not he said one he thing. He uh, supported law enforcement too. He refused to do that. Yeah, that's right. When Trump will say, will say support law enforcement. He would and not. he would not say it. So nope. it goes both ways. Also, Wallace kept interrupting Trump, and I'm not defending Trump with his answer, but I'm just saying, Trump, I think to those of us who are for him, that was a good enough answer for me, but Wallace kept pushing him and wouldn't even let him answer. Well, that's why, to Steve's point, it would have been hard because if he just said, yes. I condemn white supremacists, yeah. then he would have had to go into an explanation of why you can't just lump militia groups in there. Um, yeah, like that, we've done, okay, but when you keep getting deep, interrupted, that's, that's not going to happen. Yes. That's kind of a deep, you know, kind of subject to go tearing that apart and figuring all that. But that's not general America. They just want to hear him say, hey, I, you know. Yeah. Which he has many times he before. Has. I know, yeah. but you yeah. got to do it in front of yeah. both audience at the same mean, time. You know, but he's like, sure, I'll do that. I mean, he said those words. Sure, I'll do that. that okay. Yeah. And you know what? At the town hall, I guarantee you something like that will come up again and he yeah. will condone it. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's done it, but he says, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. But the left is the one who's causing all the violence. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that there's no doubt about that. Right. Um, but what Chris Wallace was saying was, do you condemn them to the degree of being able to say, hey, stop making this situation worse? And he could have answered that better. Because they do exacerbate the mm-hmm. situation. They do irritate the situation. But it, at some point in time, some Americans, they got to stand up and put these people in their place. Yeah. Call them militia groups. Call them whatever names you want to call them. they got to put people in their place. That's why I think when he said stand by, hmm, maybe a minute. We'll be right back. Be sure to uh, get your Field of Greens, Brickhouse Nutrition, BrickhouseChad.com, and also CowboyWines.com for Bonner Private Wines. Special thanks to them for being a new sponsor of the show, and uh, Lisa Page made me do it. I'm, we're going to get you to 20000 I love you. I'm up to 10.2 now because of you. Yeah, I don't know about that, yeah, but I think so. it's because of you. Woo. Lisa Page made me do it. Follow her on Instagram, and also subscribe to her podcast, Party Foul Steve. Are you guys working on something new? Y'all, are y'all got a project? Can we talk? <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't divulge can't any divulge information. Something. All right, I don't know. I never know about you guys. Y'all are yeah. always plotting on me. TBA, I, right, Steve? Yep. My TBA. agent orange. TBA announced. Acting up. <laughs> anyway, that's, um, go to watch Chad.com. where the fun stuff is. Of course, we are in Kansas City Friday and Saturday night, Omaha, Nebraska, Sunday and Monday night. Uh, going to be, going to be a long weekend, buddy. Yep. Uh, and, uh, then we'll be back in the studio tomorrow night, but go to watch Chad.com. Get my tour tour schedule. We're also going to be in Utah next week. We're all over. We're somewhere every weekend through the rest of the year, through the rest of the year, uh, somewhere. Your so, schedule stresses me out. It really does. Yeah. Well, we're having we're working we're working more. Mm. I won't say we're working harder, but we're working more well, because we have to we have we have smaller rooms, mm-hmm. so we have to do more shows in a night. So that's that. You know, we're used to doing the one. Yeah. Now we're actually having to work for a living. <laughs> so, uh, y'all shut up is the number one comedy album in America. It is up for Grammy consideration. Uh, uh, I made a post about that yesterday. If you could support that, it helps us because I, I want that. I want that. Uh, I want that Grammy. I mean, I want you to be on the red carpet. I want to be on the red carpet. I'll do your makeup. I mean, I don't. We'll probably have to social distance, or if they have it, I don't even know how they're doing award shows. That'll be that'll be my luck. I get, I win a Grammy, and right. I don't even get to go. Well, we're gonna to the Zoom, show. Chad. The award show red carpet to Zoom. We'll do it right here. That's right. At Blaze Studios. Yeah. Uh, make sure you leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Bye. Bye.